Today, Wait. we're continuing our study in the book of Ruth. And um, she's one of my heroes because she just absolutely determined to do God's best in her life. And, you know, when we start our life, we seldom know the path that God has for us. No. We have plans and we have ideas and it always tickles me when kids graduate from high school and they have their ideas of what they want to do in life and seldom do things work out the way you planned. And um, my husband went to Texas A&M, had a degree in marketing and business, and he's been a pastor all these years. So you never know. You know, my goal when I was graduating from high school was I was going to be the next Barbara Walters. I was going to be on television. <laughs> I was going to interview all these people and journalism was my thing and you know I think back the writing part of my life has continued all through the years um, I worked at the, in high school at our local little newspaper and so I covered all the sporting events and I just thought that was the best fun ever but Ruth when she was growing up in Moab she had no idea the plans that God had for her and so um, after her husband died and her father-in-law died, her brother-in-law died, then what she found herself in a predicament, what am I going to do with my life now? And so her mother-in-law said, I'm going back to Bethlehem. I'm going back to the house of bread and praise, which is symbolic of the local church, and I'm going to get things right again. And so she told her daughter-in-law, just stay here. Go back to your gods. Go back to your parents go back to your family and Ruth was determined to stay with her and so as they went back to Bethlehem and it was quite an ordeal it says every part of Naomi's being was so changed due to the bitterness mm -hmm. um, grief is awful it's 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 never stops it's it's re it's relentless just when you think you've got it conquered right. a wave will just roll over you and so, but you cannot camp out in the bitter things of life. You have to get your strength from the Lord. You have to spend time in his word. You're going to have to spend time in prayer. And you'll have to conquer those things. Naomi's name meant pleasant. But when she came home, her countenance was different. Everything about her was different. The people didn't hardly recognize her. And she said to them in Ruth 1.20, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. In other words, don't call me pleasant, you call me bitter. I'm like, who wants to be called bitter? Ooh, that's not good. But you know, that's where her life was. She was so full of the bitter dregs of life that she could not move forward. And um, even her name was an offense to her. That's kind of sad, isn't it? And so she's a depressed older woman, unable to comprehend that God still has a plan for her life. And it's unfortunate that she blamed God. When bad things happen to us, and if we live long enough, we're going to endure some stuff that we don't like. We can never blame God. God is a good God. He loves us. He sent his son to die for us. And so when bad things happen, we've got to keep our eyes fixed on the good God and recognize that the enemy of our soul comes to steal and kill and destroy. And that's what he's up to. So the first place the children of Israel camped in the wilderness, just for the history, was by the waters of Mara. And they were bitter waters. And, and the people... Uh, were thirsty. They were blessed. They were happy. They were thirsty. And so God led them right up to those waters of Mara to expose the bitterness In inside them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as much to drink of the bitter waters as it was to expose what's in us. And when bad things happen to us, I'm telling you, God always exposes the crud mm. that's in us. Because he wants us delivered. He wants us set free. He wants to restore us. 
but they could not conquer the giants of the land until they conquered the giant of bitterness that was in them, the children of Israel. So no one's immune from the fiery darts of the enemy. But I have found out that we're in God's character building school and he will put his finger on those issues that we need to deal with and he will say, okay, Fred, it's time for you just to handle this, not let this slide anymore. And so we learn as women and men of God to say, all right, Lord, what do you want from my life? Psalms 139 is a wonderful scripture. It says, search me, O God, know my heart, try me, and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there's any hurtful way and lead me in me and lead me in the way of everlasting life. You know, I want that. I want that in my life. I want him to search my heart. I don't know what's in my heart. Naomi didn't realize she had so much bitterness in her. And I wonder what she thought when the women came running to her and they said, Hey, homie, is that you? So sad. You don't want someone running up to you after they haven't seen you in years. And because you've gone through some horrific thing, that's their first comment. We want the joy of the Lord to fill us. We want his presence yes. to be a part of us yes. so that they say, we know you've been to hell and back, but you're looking pretty good. <laughs> you're looking pretty good. Amen. So every one of us will encounter a crisis at some time. Now, crisis in the Greek language is the same word that's translated as cross. It's very interesting hmm. because the cross of Christ is the crisis of Christ. And you know, when we think about it, who brought Jesus face to face with the cross? It was God Almighty to fulfill his desire so that he could have many sons and many daughters. Luke 14 says, whosoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So to be a disciple of the Lord means that we have to willingly lay aside our desires, the things that we want to do, and say, Lord, what do you want to do in my life? And it can be uh, many different things. I think years ago when I traveled so much, my cross was leaving my home, leaving my children, my family, to go and minister on the mission field. And um, I was thinking one time, Fern, who's been so faithful to travel through the years with me, we were gone for six weeks. Oh, yes. Two weeks in, in England and four weeks in Africa. Five different nations. Yes. And did leadership training with those precious women. And I think, how did we do that? I don't know. Only the grace of God. Right. Only the grace of God could enable you to by the time we got through with the two weeks in England, we were ready to come home. And the, the, the biggest part of our journey lay ahead. And then I read of men and women of God that were missionaries. Yes. That left and never returned home. Yes. So what is that crisis point in their life when they gave up all to serve the Lord? Now, Naomi suffered an enor enormous loss when her husband died and her two sons died. But she did not pass her crisis test. Mm. We've got to pass the test that we encounter in our life. When we have adversity and we have horrible things happen, that's when we either run to God or we run from Him. And I trust we will all run to Him. We won't blame God. We recognize the enemy is the one that's coming to steal from us. And our attitude, oh my goodness, reflects on our countenance. If we have a bad attitude, it will show up on our face. Right. <laughs> Isaiah 43 is an interesting passage because it talks about, it says, but now thus saith the Lord your creator, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Israel. This is the same person. Jacob and Israel yes. were the same man. Yes. But you notice it's a creation and then a forming, yes. according to Isaiah. He said, I've called you by name, you're mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. 
because we're an eternal person. If we've made Jesus the Lord of our yes. life, then, then our spirit is never going to die. This flesh can die and rot and decay, but the real Frida on the inside that's still a size eight, hallelujah, <laughs> is going to live forever because Jesus is my Lord. So, yes, we go through things, but in the midst of our most awful days, God is faithful. And so that word formed is interesting because it means to be molded and squeezed. Yes. I don't like to be squeezed. I don't think any of us welcome, oh, God, go ahead, just mold me, mm. you know, the potter. If he doesn't like the clay, he does. He smashes it and starts all over again. Yes, and I have felt like there's been times in my life where he smashed me back into the clay. I said, all right, we're going to start again. Yeah. So what do we do? We say, okay, God, you are the potter. I'm the clay. You're going to form me. You're going to squeeze me to make me into who you call me to be. I want to pass the character test. And I'll be blunt. So Amen. we can learn from that, can't we? We can learn from that. Crisis points are either stepping stones to release the power of God, or they become tombstones that hang around our neck and stop the presence of God. So when I see people that have endured much heartache, and they have pressed through, and they have not let that define them, it gives me encouragement. It gives me hope that I can make it too. And so if you're listening today online or you're here in our class and you've been through something awful, I, don't camp out there. Don't let the enemy remind you of everything you've done wrong in the last year of your life, or the last 10 years, the last 20 years. You just rise up in the anointing of God and say, I'm going to be who God's called me to be. There's two kind of prayers that we can pray when we find ourselves in a mess. One is, God, get me out of this mess because we don't think think things are happening as fast as they we want them to and there's a desire to go back to Moab or we can pray I want the will of God to be done in my life and so I have always determined that I'm not going backwards I'm going to go forwards I don't know what the future holds but I know who holds it and so my trust is in the Lord I believe if Naomi and her husband Elimelech had stayed in Bethlehem alongside Boaz, see right. he never left. No. It would have been a different story. But they chose to leave home. And whenever you realize that God's purpose for us being formed in his image is more important than our comfort zone. He has a good plan for our life. And we can endure the trials and adversity of life. Whatever we're going through, with the help of our Lord, we can endure that. Even though when we don't see anything happening, our faith is in the Lord. And so I think about Joseph. My, how he endured the, the ridicule and the rejection of his family. Mm -hmm. And then he's on assignment with his daddy to go check on his brothers. They see him coming. They're angry. They throw him in a pit. Then they sell him to the slave traders. Yes. How many times did he want to be delivered from his crisis? Yes. But he pressed on. You know, he passed the character building school until it was time for him to appear before <laughs> Pharaoh. But Naomi's, on the other hand, they blame God for their situation. Yes, yes. And my prayer is that we're changed from glory to glory. Yes. That when life turns sour, we don't become sour. Yeah. We discern, I'm going to take responsibility for my actions. Yes. I'm going to make the changes that need to be made. I'm not going to be immature and blame God and blame a church. I'm going to say, now, what is my part in this? When I've talked to individuals through the years and I said, are you in a local church? No, I got hurt. And I'm thinking, well, I can get hurt going to Walmart. I mean, the cashier can be rude or mm -hmm. someone can bump into you and you spill all your stuff you got in your hand. I mean, things happen. But why do we blame the church 
The church is a bunch of imperfect people just trying to serve God to the best of their ability. Amen. And sometimes the church does crazy stuff. But we don't want to blame God for that. Only the mature take responsibility for their actions, repent, and assume a posture for restoration of the soul. No root of bitterness is going to spring up on the inside of me. I'm determined. I'm going to give my Lord all of the stuff, the disappointments, the unfulfilled expectations, all of the things that have happened in my life because I don't want to have myself so full of bitterness that it spews out according to the Bible. And, you know, we read about that in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 15. It says, when you're bitter, you defile everyone that comes across your path. And so when I see someone that has gone through bitter waters, I don't even have to see or hear their words. I see it on their countenance. Right. And we don't want that. We want the Lord to restore us and refresh us. But it's a choice to hold on to the past like Naomi did or to press forward to the future. Elimelech and Naomi made that decision to leave Bethlehem. Their family chose to live in Moab. When they left home, they left all the provision. And when we leave the Lord, then we lose a portion of our inheritance. You know, even in their most rebellious days, God was still in control. I love it. You know, he doesn't give up on us. We may give up on ourselves, right? But he doesn't give up on us. He holds fast to us if we will allow him to. He is bigger than our weakness. He's bigger than our failures. He's bigger than our mistakes. I heard a preacher one time say that God's the God of the second chance. I would say he's the God of the third chance and the fourth chance, Amen. the fifth chance, the sixth chance. A righteous man will fall seven times, yes. but he gets back up again. Mm -hmm. And so you're going through stuff. Just keep getting up. Just keep getting up. Get up and put on your face and get going. Mm -hmm. I, I thank the Lord for his angels that are sent to minister to you and for me to cause us to be victorious. Her Naomi's words were, were laced with bitterness. In her mind, she could not accept the fact that she and her husband might have been responsible for some of the things she was going through right now. And she said, we left full. But in fact, they abandoned their home and their inheritance with God. So she didn't leave destitute. She left full. And it says in Roman, uh, excuse me, Ruth 1, 21, I went out full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has witnessed against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. Now, if she was so full, why did you leave? Right. Yes, it was a famine. Yes, it was hard times. But you made that choice to allow that to happen. It takes spiritual maturity to admit our mistakes, our failures, our wrong decisions, and then be humble-minded enough to receive help from the Lord. His grace is there for us, but we have to reach out and, and grab a hold of it. Yes. When I think about the Apostle Paul and, and how much that he endured, and you know, three times he said, Lord, can you take this from me? And he said, my grace is it's sufficient. sufficient. Well, sometimes you feel like it's tough. But I want to encourage you, do not camp out in the wrong way. It takes us to the place where we say, Lord, I'm going to receive everything you have for me. The word if is a big word in our life. God says, I will do this, if you'll do this. And so what we want to do, we will say, Lord, I want you to work in my life in such a way that I can receive everything that you have. The Spirit of the Lord is so precious to us because even when we leave angry, upset about something, if we'll repent and ask the Lord to forgive us, He is very faithful to do that. Naomi's words were, I went out full. Mm. But the Lord brought me back empty. No, 
you, you brought yourself back right. in. Mm -hmm. So when I read the scripture and I read something like that, you know, the, the Jewish historians said that he actually had a lot, but he did not want to share it with those that had need. And you know, that happens to us. If God blesses us, he blesses us for a reason. To meet our needs, but also to be furnished in abundance that we can give to every good and charitable cause. It's not for us to be stingy and tight wad and store up everything for ourselves. One day, we're going to leave it all. Not one thing will we take with us. And so I would rather... <laughs> be generous and give to those that have need than for me to hoard it and hold on to it. Naomi had a lie that she believed. The hand of the Almighty has afflicted me. No, the hand of the Almighty had mercy on her. Because she, as she made that determination to go back to Bethlehem, God was already at work or one day she's going to be blessed beyond measure when she holds a precious little baby boy and it will be like a grandchild yes. that she would never have expected to have. So if we camp out on the horrible things that are happening to us today and we blame God, we miss out on the, the treasure that is waiting maybe a year down the road maybe five years down the road. We don't know. We don't know our future. All we know is that God is a good God and he wants to bless us. The key is if we will be willing to let him. That means giving up control. Giving up control can be the, as simple as, okay, God, you see the mess I made myself. I need you to help me straighten it out. My favorite prayer through the years is help. Lord, I need help. <laughs> I'm a jam. I need help. <laughs> but he is faithful to do that if we'll just ask him. I want to pray for us that we will be willing for the Lord to help us. Lord, I just pray for everyone within the sound of my voice today. Lord, I thank you that, that we will not be like Naomi. When bad things happen to us, that we will not camp out on that crisis point but that we will press through and we will receive every good thing that you have planned for our life. Lord, we don't want to blame you. And so right now we determine we refuse to blame our God for any bad thing. Instead, we say with our mouth, God, you are a good God and that you will reward us as we diligently seek our face. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you today for watching. This is quite an adventure. If you want the book, it's available on Amazon. It's called She Left a Legacy. And my goodness, did Ruth not leave a legacy? Boy, did she. And she um, found herself in a great company of women that were obedient to the things of the Lord. Yes. And I'm so glad you're with me today. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming.